Good afternoon. I'm Tom DeWitt and I'm welcoming you in anticipation of good weather when you're here on Alumni Weekend. It's a gorgeous day outside here in Aurora and I want to introduce myself to as many as I can in the shortest time as possible. I'm hopeful that over time I will be able to get out to the clubs and to meet many of the generous donors and faithful alumni who volunteer and spread the word about this great institution. I've been here about two months now and I'm getting a good feel for this institution and I want to bring you a lot of good news. At least I hope it's good news. There must be lots of questions about why did the board bring an interim president in instead of a permanent one? What does that mean? Does it have a special significance? Well, perhaps I can best explain it by telling you a little bit about myself. I'm an academic by training. I have a PhD in European history and I taught at a variety of places, including Wellesley, where I met my future wife, University of Toronto, and in the Arctic for the University of Manitoba. And then I switched careers, added an MBA in public finance to my uh, list of degrees and went into educational administration as a vice president for finance, later as an executive vice president, and the last 19 years of my career as president of LaSalle College in Newton, Massachusetts. In that span of time, I guess I became what you would call a small college expert. Not only did I work at small colleges, but when I was a commissioner in New England for six years, I chaired a small college committee. And after that, I led for many years uh, accreditation teams to small and in most cases troubled or um, institutions that, that needed some work to restabilize. When the trustees learned from Lisa that she was planning to retire, I think they debated whether they were ready for a new president or whether they should bring in somebody like me who's a bit of a change artist, whose strength lies in looking at what makes small colleges work effectively and if they're struggling, how do we reposition them for a successful future. And I think that's what's being asked of me during these two years. And I see my goal fairly clearly. I have to change the culture slightly. I have to change the, man the management structure, the way we make decisions. I have to begin to work with the faculty to expand our curriculum. That's absolutely critical. And I have to stabilize the finances. If all those things can get started, and if many of them can be accomplished during my brief tenure, then this institution should have a bright future and attract a very dynamic, entrepreneurial, I hope, new president. What has struck me about this institution in the time I've been here has been the incredible dedication of a very talented faculty, extraordinarily engaged and happy and active learners, the students, the interchange, I have not found anywhere that I have visited or worked to the same degree as here. So I think there is a, there is a strong residual uh, and p strong potential, I guess is the very best word, for this institution to reposition itself for the future. Wells is well known as a high quality liberal arts institution. But unfortunately, fewer and fewer students seek out that kind of experience. What with high student loans, insecurity about future jobs, it's not surprising that the number of students graduating with a traditional liberal arts degree is now hovering around 20%. Most families and their students worry about what kind of jobs they can get and that clearly speaks to the need for some more professional programs here.
But what makes this place different is the ability to weave a professional program into a strong liberal arts curriculum, as opposed to creating silos where you have business here and you might have uh, you might have sports management there and you've got some liberal arts here that kind of infuses it. What Wells can do and do particularly well is to create an environment in which professional programs are embedded in liberal arts curriculum as opposed to a liberal arts curriculum that adds a little smattering of learning and of awareness, problem solving and what have you. I think the strength here lies in creating a new paradigm for learning by admitting that yes the college needs to change slightly but that doesn't mean it has to give up what, it, what its strengths are and its hallmark, namely its liberal art learning, its small classes, its commitment to educating students who are critical thinkers, problem solvers, who are articulate, who are well read, who are able to communicate effectively. Those are skills with which you can, you can enter any profession and be successful. What we're focusing on now and since I've arrived is clearly to stabilize the enrollment. The past history has been uneven, at times dramatically positive, uh, great cer ceremony around 200, 210 students and then followed by a year with 140 students. We need more stability. And so my focus has been on creating opportunities for strengthening our enrollment among the things we've already introduced are we're moving our admissions over to Pettibone because it's a, a building that is more attractive, that, that shows better, that allows our students a sort of a more intimate interaction with a counselor instead of the large and somewhat somber Macmillan. We have also uh, begun to increase the staffing for admissions, this place has been in austerity too long. It's time to invest, and invest I will. The faculty is ready and eager to develop new curriculum, to infuse professional programs into their liberal arts. We are looking at everything from the business program, which is here and still awaiting baccalaureate approval from, from the regents. And of course, the capstone that I see as being essential to the future success of this place is a greater focus on the environment. We have a perfect location for creating an institute, say, for a sustainable uh, environment or, or something that captures what makes our location so unique. So we're very anxious to begin programmatic review, strengthening of our enrollment, beginning to add back faculty we have lost, and doing all that while we're balancing our budgets. I'm pleased to say that Lisa um, bequeathed a balanced budget to me for last year. It's tightly balanced, but it is balanced. No more of these big deficits. And the year we're in also has a balanced budget. But we're doing more than balancing budgets. We're trying to be creative by investing in initiatives that make an immediate difference in the life of this institution. You'll hear a lot more about that. When I'm out visiting the alums in, at the various clubs, I want to talk about these initiatives. They're small, they're fundable, they don't require big, huge gifts, whether it's a software program uh, to help one of our staff be more effective in placing students in internships, whether it's beautifying the campus. For those of you who are coming for alumni weekend, you're going to find color everywhere. You're going to find an inviting campus with red banners proclaiming wells throughout the walkways. The steps and the patio of Macmillan has been restored and looks beautiful. We are, we are working on developing the Ryerson Common that has been 
named uh, in honor of Lisa Ryerson, which should be ready ne next spring. Construction will be going on on campus, always a welcome sign, a sign uh, that Wells is on the move. I've been about and I've met some of our trustees and wonderful alums who care deeply about this place, and I'm optimistic that this institution's best days are still ahead of it. Let me say a few specific words about our alumni. This is an extraordinary body. I've read the history, which I found fascinating, and I've learned a lot about what you have done to make this a wonderful institution. I've worked at many an institution. I have visited dozens more. But the profound love of this Wells by its alumni is just, it's, very, it make, it's a very emotional experience here, clearly. And so I want to let you know that I, I value it. Wells values your affection for and your support of this institution. It wouldn't exist but for you. And so when I get out to meet some of you, I want to send that message to thank you for volunteering, thank you for your generosity, but most specifically, thank you for believing in this wonderful educational institution. I hope you will join me in making this institution proud of its history and entrepreneurial in its vision for the future. Its potential is enormous. Thank you. I look forward to meeting many of you.